My name is Patrick King, and you are here for another edition of Sustainable Nashville Live. And I forgot to say Patrick King of Urban Green Lab, but you already know that. Um, the purpose of this series, once again, is to connect the public with those organizations and uh, just individuals out there in Nashville, making it a more sustainable city for all. Um, and today, I am here with Amy Crownover. Um, a few reminders before we do get started. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, um, there you can find all of our previous interviews and much, much more. Just search Urban Green Lab uh, in the search bar and click the bell to subscribe. Um, and Urban Green Lab is a nonprofit, so if you feel so inclined to support the work that we do, uh, feel free to visit our website at urbangreenlab.org and you can make a donation there or you can text 44321 to your, on your cell phone, uh, and you'll get a link sent directly uh, via text, and that's 44321. Uh, and with all that stuff out of the way, let's get started. Uh, first and foremost, Amy, how are you doing today? Great. Great. Had my walk on the Greenway this morning and bike ride last night, so I'm charged up for your tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> There's some real hard hitting stuff. So I'm happy that you're mentally prepared. Um, yeah, it's a, it was a great day for a walk and I'm imagining it was a great evening for a bike, right? Yeah. It was. Got dark too early, but fall is coming. Yeah, it, it is. Um, could you start by telling us what exactly a Greenway is and how your organization got its start? Sure. Um, the two are obviously um, very connected, but Greenways for Nashville started <coughs> in the early 90s. It was founded by um, what is now the commission, um, and it's the Greenways and Open Space Commission. Mm -hmm. It's a government, a metro government, um, it was a parks board, and then there is a subset of that is this commission. They were founded in the early 90s by then um, Mayor Phil Bredesen. And there was a core group of organizers, citizens, um, as well as Mayor Bredesen, who had um, been um, informed of and visited, experienced other cities who have greenways. They are called different things in this different cities. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the Green Belt in Boise. Um, in, in Nashville, a greenway is a linear park. So the Greenways division is part of the Metro Parks Department. Mm -hmm. And there are um, almost 100 miles of greenways in Nashville. Okay. Uh, some of them are more linear than others, um, but conceptually it is a paved trail um, that is for foot, anything human powered. So mm -hmm. foot, you know, walking, running, um, jogging, and then pedaling your bike. Um, you can, you know, rollerblade, anything that is human powered. So they mm -hmm. are parking, um, typically green on both sides, hence Greenway. Gotcha. Um, but uh, they are, some are more urban than others. So mm -hmm. folks might, well, the Greenway that I'm familiar with, is a circle around a golf course. And I'm speaking specifically of um, uh, Richland Creek Greenway. Mm -hmm. um, however, Shelby Bottoms, if you can think about it, it's an elongated track of land, whole lot of green. Yeah. Um, and you know, they come in different shapes and sizes. And that is, the definition is a linear park with a multi trail that is okay. ADA compliant. So it is designed by the Greenways Division. They're built by the Greenways Division and they're maintained by the Parks Department. Um, and they are for users of all abilities, um, which I think is really obviously inclusion, but mm -hmm. it's um, as well as uh, anybody, who, yeah, they're all free. So they're part yeah. of our system. We are the nonprofit friends group per se, foundation, okay. different, you know, what's in a name. Um, mm -hmm. We are a 1C3. Uh, we were founded, I believe our paperwork was filed in 1994. Okay. So we celebrated our 25th anniversary last year. Um, and we are on this planet to um, provide the uh, public support. So we, um, 
we are advocates. We educate the community about the availability, the maps, how to get on a greenway, just, you know, uh, do marketing for mm -hmm. this program. Um, we also um, advocate for funding um, through the greenways are largely paid for mm -hmm. a capital dollars through the metro budget. Okay. So the capital budget, same thing that builds schools, mm -hmm. um, builds, does infrastructure, does the greenways. And so we do quite a bit of um, education and advocation there, um, advocating. And then um, last week, we, we raise private dollars. So when private dollars are brought in, they can be combined with public funding mm -hmm. to make something that is already the master plan or the vision happen faster. Mm -hmm. So we accelerate, um, you know, the develop the addition of more greenways by bringing private dollars. We can enhance a greenway mm -hmm. by private dollars uh, for water fountains um, that stay on all year gotcha. for beds, for trailhead maps. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want, we're a team member with the Parks Department. Um, it, is, it is the master vision that we um, support. And then we provide that public, private, we provide that private partnership piece. Okay. All right. That was, um, thank you for your answer there. That was awesome. Um, I've been on the Greenways, but, um, you know, I never really knew that relationship between parks and your organization. Uh, so thank you. Um, I think Parks Department gets the credit, mm -hmm. does the credit for the heavy lifting. I mean, they do this incredible work mm -hmm. and, and we support them. Um, and it's, it's a great, great relationship. We're on the same page and we do everything we can to um, get them the, the tools, the support, um, and promote the program. Love the Parks Department right there. With Love you. the Parks Department. Love them. Um, Next up, how, is, uh, how has COVID impacted the work that you all do? Yeah, so, wow, a um, couple of different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, at the beginning, um, a lot of education. We were all educating ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is how COVID you know, spread, how quickly it spread, what the risks of being um, in a setting with the public, um, which would be a greenway or a park. Mm -hmm. and um, learning with the rest of the world. Uh, yeah. We um, were able to assist um, in a very quick fashion with outreach that I guess my objective with obviously science needed to be um, the determinant and the mm -hmm. National Health Department. But if the greenways in some parts of the parks, but specifically the greenways could stay open during COVID, um, I felt that that was going to keep people um, from coming completely unglued. Yeah. <laughs> it, it became very, as people saw parks starting to shut down, national parks and state parks, they all have a different um, way of bringing people together. Greenways being linear paths, well, it's kind of hard sometimes when they're crowded, it is mm -hmm. hard to physically distance as recommended. So a lot of education that be on the greenway, keep your distance, be respectful of each other, mm -hmm. uh, greenways crowded. So we did a lot of that. We um, funded signage that went out immediately, yard signs that were just, you know, reminders. Mm -hmm. uh, and really tried to um, implore our constituents to use the greenways in a responsible way. Yeah. Um, really not, never said it, but for fear of them being taken. If too crowded and if, mm -hmm. if they were too crowded we said go walk someplace else yes don't get on it's not gonna help yeah um so that was the initial gut reaction like how can we pivot like what are we gonna do yeah um i think how has covid affected us now um it has there's no silver lining to covid because covid's horrible yeah however um the value of outdoor space uh stress reduction mental, physical, um, has been huge. Mm -hmm. And that has elevated um, in, I hope some decision makers, the priority with which our park system and our greenways are funded. Mm -hmm. And then I think our philanthropic um, community 
has also experienced that themselves. Yeah. When you call a decision maker, a CEO or an executive, and she says, oh my, I've been out on the greenway every day with my five-year-old. Mm-hmm. I had to, you know, so it's, yeah. it's really brought, like you explained earlier, you got a bike and you're mm-hmm. just, a lot of people are discovering what's in their own backyard. Yeah. So that has um, really been um, an opportunity for us to, um, in a time when many are not able to, we're really um, doing our best to um, keep the pedal to the metal and get do what we can in these mm-hmm. challenging times yeah and it's yeah. not just covid um obviously uh the spotlight on um inequities um mm-hmm. health disparities um within our community those are also those are something that greenways can help address mm-hmm. so there's a lot going on and we're we're not a solution problems but we certainly are a legacy of um healing yeah yeah so. you all are providing uh what i would consider uh an essential uh an essential part of um getting my words all jumbled um but yeah you know we've 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 studies prove that spending time outside has so many positive benefits mm-hmm. and the green ways of providing that for so many people right now uh, and so I guess what I was just trying to say is, you know, it's, it's, it's an essential thing, you know, quality of life, yeah. You know? yeah. whatever you're getting out of the greenway, you might get something that I'd get that's different than a mom of five or a dad, uh, or any, you know, a, a senior citizen, everybody gets something different, Yeah. but they're yeah. essential. Uh, many of those things are essential. Yeah. Could not agree with you more. So it's that like, Oh, wow. <laughs> you know? has been has been fun yeah uh yeah. well hey what you do contributes to fun and relaxation for me and many nashvillians so thank you awesome yeah. glad to do it yeah um glad so to- next up is a, a little bit of a more personal question could you tell us um, a little bit about yourself and how you got interested in this line of work yeah sure um so i have a um a pretty varied uh, career path, but um, I am a New Englander mm-hmm. by birth, and I came here to go to college. And I um, have always been in outdoors, just recreationally, just um, a runner, um, rode horses. Um, I loved, balanced my professional life, my personal life with outdoor. And I was initially, um, I graduated from Vanderbilt as a chemical engineer. Loved everything that it taught me. Um, I think I got out and thought, what am I doing drilling oil wells? Mm -hmm. So it was that uh, wake up. And from there, I also realized I enjoyed working with people. Um, And while I was as an engineer, um, my transition was to um, banking, which makes no sense, but it does with the uh, process oriented, you know, mm-hmm. engineering versus yeah. financial analysis. So I worked for um, many years at Third National Bank. I was a corporate loan officer. And um, through that, I uh, grew to love Nashville and Nashvillians. Um, my husband um, grew up here, so stayed here and um, from banking um, came the calling through volunteer work, and I was um, lured to the uh, nonprofit world by the Tennessee Environmental Council. Mm-hmm. I was director there and worked for Harpeth Conservancy, mm-hmm. uh, which was the development director there. But Greenways had always been in my um, world because I have Greenway close to my house. Yeah. And this position um, became available um it was just so natural and easy um for me to envision myself working here and um use uh, using all the skills that i compiled the engineering the banking and um the nonprofit. so that is how landed at greenways for nashville we have an incredible board of directors and i um it's it's not all easy but i love the challenge 
that's, so awesome. that's how I landed here as a chemical engineer. Yeah. Don't, don't ask me anything about the periodic table because it's changed since I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, n never fear um, about any questions about the periodic table. Or at least, yeah, <laughs> we, we have a couple more questions to get. <laughs> Um, so earlier you mentioned that there were over or around 100 miles worth of greenway in Nashville. Um, yeah. Are there any um, plans to expand that? To yeah, there are. Um, the uh, Parks Department did a 10-year annual planning process. Uh, it was done, I think it was announced in 2017, and it's a document that people can the executive summary is where I would send people, but you can mm -hmm. plan to play. Mm -hmm. In plan to play, uh, about nine, 10,000 citizens, it was a lengthy process. We're engaged as to what is Na what are Nashvillians, what do they use, what do they want in their park system? What's, um, and the park system is huge. It's community mm -hmm. centers, um, it's, um, you know, ball fields, it's, it's got a lot, uh, it's obviously athletic sports box. Um, it has got a lot of services. Um, they do before school and after school programming within the community centers. So there's a, a huge swath of impact that the parks department um, administers and, and is, does a great job with. Um, ranking um, at the top of what people liked um, and wanted more of, um, but obviously many things were on that list, but it was greenways and trails. Mm -hmm. Greenways had, since they were first built, the first one was out in Bellevue, they have gained popularity and they have gained acceptance and neighborhoods seeing one in, visiting one in another neighborhood brought the demand, well, we want that in our neighborhood. Mm -hmm. what, so the vision and plan to play um, I believe when 2017, when it was announced um, or announced by uh, Mayor Barry, it called for, um, I think, 53 additional miles from wherever it was at that point. So I think we were in the high 80s. Metro mm -hmm. was in the high 80s of miles. And the 10-year plan was to add 50 plus miles. Mm -hmm. So recognizing that the community wants more. They have a lot of benefits, a few of which we've already talked about, but mm -hmm. kind of the community, neighborhood, mm -hmm. conservation, you know, uh, physical, mental, um, place, place for safe places, space making. Um, but that 50 plus miles was announced. Um, when a plan is announced or a vision, um, the funding is not, is not attached to it. So okay. the is something that is determined on a year-by-year -year basis by the capital budget, by the council, and by the mayor. So um, funding that, there have been, you know, some lean times. Mm -hmm. It is the vision, but it is not funded at this mm -hmm. point. Um, and, and again, it's not going to get funded all at once. It's going to get annual chunks. That would mm -hmm. be my, historically. They, they've gotten annual chunks, and the division has has a master plan, they have probably, um, you know, they have multiple dozens of projects that are very ready to roll, mm -hmm. but the funding will, when the funding is released, the priorities, the department's priorities will be deployed where the money is. Gotcha, okay. So yes, there's a vision. Right now, I think there is a challenge for everybody. Yeah. Schools. Again, any infrastructure mm -hmm. is challenged by um, reduced revenues. Yeah. In our, so, so yeah. yes, vision is there. Um, the mayor, the current mayor, um, is was a Greenways and Open Space Commission member. Mm -hmm. um, is very well versed in the value of Greenways. Um, however, the mayor has a lot on his plate. Uh, there's a there's a lot going on in relation yep. to funding in our fair city. Yes. yes, not to mention the tornado. Yes, you know, yes. Mm -hmm. not to forget. I mean, yeah, that's huge, yeah. huge. Yeah. So, so we're I, I see the Greenway as the legacy thing. Mm -hmm. We've got things that we've got things that are immediate in front of 
that are big, but we also have a legacy we have to continue to fund so that our city stays livable, desirable, and healthy for everybody. Could not agree with the more. question. Yeah, no, um, I, I think you went above and beyond answering that question, and I, I, I really do appreciate that. Awesome. Yeah. Um, this next question we have comes from our friends at Socket, Metro's mm -hmm. sustainability outlet. Um, in addition to facilitating exercise and recreation, uh, how do greenways support wildlife in Nashville? Yeah, so um, I think if you think, great question, love mm -hmm. our Socket. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you think of a linear park, um, it's a corridor of green. If you were up in an airplane and there were a greenway that ran from north, uh, the north tip of the county to the southern tip of the county, and it were a swath, it were a runway, let's say, and had mm -hmm. green on the sides, and it had a paved strip in the middle. Well, the paved strip in the middle is not attracting wildlife, <laughs> but that land that is on either side, that mm -hmm. is becomes or is part of the park system becomes a corridor for wildlife mm -hmm. whether it's wildlife that does need to have some you know movement migration access to different um, parts of town or different environments you know field meadows water yeah. um, so and uh, so that is the, the mammals the uh, land animals benefit from uh, that having that ability to um, move freely from point A to point B um, without having to cross a you know cross a road or yeah. <laughs> walk on concrete. Mm -hmm. which, um, the other piece of um, how it helps wildlife is uh, the um, aquatic wildlife. Mm -hmm. We have eight river corridors in um, Nashville. The greenways are largely, not exclusively, developed along the major rivers, Cumberland River, and, and I won't list them all, but, um, but Cumberland River being, you know, one of the, the largest river. And so when a greenway is um, adjacent to a river, the land between the greenway and the river is called the riparian zone. Okay. And that becomes protected by virtue of the greenway becoming part of the park system. And when you protect riparian zone, um, you protect the critters in the creek from runoff contamination. Um, it helps with flooding. It helps with preserving habitat mm -hmm. um, so that it, it's not, a, a, if you can imagine a parking lot abutting directly to a river, everything's gonna run off that parking yeah. lot. It's gonna carry all the toxicity when you have the greenway and the land is a buffer mm -hmm. it protects it is a water quality um protection it, it helps protect um or it helps improve water quality um in a situation where you're taking away pavement mm -hmm. and that's what happening in urban urban settings where you're removing pavement and you're going in with a greenway and in the rural settings you're creating a a buffer between development, home, business, and the green and the river with a linear park. So, all right. That will, uh, and I'm sure uh, I left something out, but I don't have a naturalist degree, so I'm sure mm -hmm. Duke can chime in more. Oh, hey, go with what you know. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> all right. So this next question uh, actually does relate to the periodic table. I'm also just joking. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I'm just joking. Um, my next question is actually, uh, how does an organization like Greenways for Nashville uh, contribute to making Nashville a more sustainable city? Yeah, uh, so sustainability, um, I think in the definition, you can go real general, but mm -hmm. if you, um, part, as I had mentioned before, we were founded by the Greenways and Open Space Commission division we work with is called Greenways um, and Open Space Division. It's a division of the Parks Department that um, brings in land to mm -hmm. the Parks Department, brings in through purchase, through access of um, protective easements across property, 
So um, anytime in our built environment when there is a mechanism um, and a, a way to bring or to conserve uh, or of a green footprint um, in development, and if that's done through a greenways or through pocket parks, mm -hmm. that's work of the Greenways and Open Space Division as it pertains to open space. Mm -hmm large tracts of land like Shelby Bottom are more than a greenway. I mean, there are, there are trails, there's a, a nature center, there's golf. Um, there's a lot going on, there are ball fields down there. So um, those lands might not all stay exclusively greenway, but um, helping to conserve the green that we have, even as we build so rapidly and grow so rapidly, um, is how we contribute to how our work contributes to sustainability. Yeah. And, um, lots of other partners out there are doing incredible things, you know, Tree Foundation mm -hmm. um, and, and, and many others, the, the water quality folk. Um, so it's definitely a team effort. Yeah. But you got to have the land. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 do, you have to have gotta, the land. I mean, the city and, mm -hmm. and the parks department. If that land is not paved, and not densely built on, then it is doing its piece to sustain air, water, quality. Yes, so. quality of life as well. Yeah, heat yeah. indexes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. quality of life. Yeah. So that's the open space. I also say you got to have the land first. Mm -hmm. That's um, that's why greenways can't just be everywhere. The yeah. Has to um, be. We have to. The parks department has to have access to it. They have to have the funding to secure it, and, um, and it's truly a, uh, a, a, net, a natural setting as much as possible. Yeah. Those eight corridors who have the trails, Harpeth River, I mean, you get out there and, and you realize, oh, this is just so natural mm -hmm. because there's no reason to be building that close to a river or a creek. And now, especially since we've had some flooding, it's crystal clear but mm -hmm. those greenways do create a buffer okay um how now how can um you know members of the public kind of support the work that you all do yeah so uh, i like to start with um get out and explore mm -hmm. um, and we have free uh and for we have it online um there's an app called NASH, N-A-S-H, G-R. It's a free app. It's essentially a pocket map. Um, we also have, um, that looks like a national park map. Mm -hmm. And you can go to our website and go to our map site. You can request it, COVID, and we have them distributed in a few locations across town. COVID, many of the normal distribution routes are not mm -hmm. available yeah so we will mail it to you um, and once folks get out on a greenway and start exploring and, and realizing what's already theirs they want more and and there are many ways to engage and to support greenways through us um, I, we have volunteers who literally go on their greenway every day mm -hmm. and pick and, and they just do that. That is, they love their greenway. They can, they feel that they're a steward and ambassador and they do their part. They go out with a bag and they pick up trash. Yeah. Super cool. Kids can do that. Um, there are folks who are very politically or, um, and I say local politics, um, politically engaged, so advocating with a relationship that you have with your council member, mm -hmm. and talking to, or going for a walk. And there is the ability now to take walks at physical distance with somebody who's an influencer on a greenway and, and you as a citizen communicating that message. Yeah. Um, because the council does obviously have a very important role in budget. Mm -hmm. and funding, as does the mayor. Yeah. Uh, so advocating there. You can join us. Um, we have a um, $35 individual membership. Mm -hmm. 
as a member, you're adding your voice to our collective voices and our collective worth. Um, it's, there are no benefits other than you feel well about what you're doing. Um, we, of course, communicate with you and, and keep you up. So yeah. That is a benefit. But by being a member, you're also saying, I'm going to do what I can, but I'm also funding or supporting um, the work of an organization that's been doing it for 25 years, mm -hmm. um, has been a partner to bring the 100 miles to Nashville. If you want more, um, you, need, you let us know that with your support. So, um, you know, financial support is always there, but there are a lot of ways that folks can independently say, I'm going to keep it clean. I'm going to do um, my part to mm -hmm. preserve this um, space. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I really appreciate the how many, you know, multifaceted ways you can, uh, as an individual, support Green Ways for Nashville. Um, and I'm going to be providing all those links for folks if they want to become members and things like that as well. Um, and of course, if it were not COVID, mm -hmm. we have a, a, vol a, a robust volunteer program. Yeah. We have ambassadors who um, are often out at events and, and helping. Um, so it, you know, sounded pretty stripped down, but that's where we are today. Yeah. Um, and so there are not the activities and we can't, we don't have volunteers in the office. Yeah. Um, um, until um, we can move through this and the vaccine is out. We yeah. want everybody. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, and I'm sure the citizens of Nashville also appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I only have one more question for you, although this is a really big question, so feel free to answer any way you please. Um, what is your sustainable vision for the city of Nashville? Oh, wow. <laughs> sustainable, yeah. Um, I, I have been to cities, and I'm, we all have as visitors and I've taken away um, from certain cities, um, towns, you know, this uh, embracement. Uh, they've embraced outdoors, the environment, conservation, nature, parks, activity and community. They've, and uh, the green word, they've embraced it. And again, it's different things to different people. And my vision for Nashville would be that we evolve through these challenges that we're addressing um, and our leadership is addressing. Um, are we what we want to be? Are we the Nashville It City um, that we um, was in the news, you know, years ago? and um, getting a lot of attention. Are we where we thought we'd be? And I think most people will say no, you know, because um, we've got, just like the rest of the nation, we've had a, a bucket of cold water um, dropped on our revenue source, our tourism. And, and I personally would love to see uh, every Nashvilleian have a five minute walk um, or less to a park. I think every Nashvilleian has that weight. Mm -hmm. And I think that this uh, energy that you feel when you visit a city, um, I'm going to call out Boise, Idaho, because okay. I've been there this summer. Okay. And they have something called a green belt. Um, and again, I was a visitor, so I may be missing, but there's this energy that that community is building around their green space because the green space is the priority. Mm -hmm. People are attracted to that city, my perception, because it embraces the quality of life that is brought to people by sustainable environment. And I think that we have an opportunity to elevate that priority because I think it's a priority for our people. And I think it has been 
clarified and made more clear. And I'm not saying it's at the detriment of other things. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I'm not sure that we, uh, we aren't sustainable <laughs> right now. Yeah. And, and right. just because pandemic shutting down a, a lot, that's not sustainable. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, there are ways to relook at this. And I, I think we're in a place where it's not too late mm -hmm. to make a serious commitment as a city, as private corporations, as an entity to, to make Nashville a place you want to be because it's put conservation and the environment in number one. Yeah. Not, yeah. Amy, Sorry. that that was a that was almost poetic. That was uh, it's a really good answer. Well, and if you give me a hundred million dollars, I can help make it happen. <laughs> yeah, I'll do everything in my power to make sure you get that money. Um, and I don't mean me. The you know the division. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, that's where we would give it. <laughs> yeah. So that's. I just think I think we can. I think we can pull from the ashes mm -hmm. some really valuable, you know, priorities. Yeah. Could not agree with you more. Um, that was a perfect question to end on, Amy. Thank you so much there. Um, if viewers have any additional questions or want to reach out, uh, is there a best way to do that if they want to get involved in things like that? Absolutely. Just Amy, A-M-Y at greenways plural for just the word nashville.org um, our website greenwayfornashville.org um, we've got a great team here um, and if i can't if i'm not the person to answer the question or um, i will um, certainly put them in touch with who is and um, love to see um, more members love to see more people using the app and mm -hmm. And if you want to help distribute maps, if you have a, a small business and it and you're you are comfortable having a stand where people can take maps, um, we'd be happy to supply you with maps um, because everybody has a net, and that education and awareness um, is only going to play back to that theme of we want more of it. Yeah, Absolutely. we love our greenways and we want more. Yeah. Yes. Yes. More. Greenways. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, Amy, thank you again for being with us today. Um, next week, we'll be interviewing Jeffrey Orkin, founder of Greener Roots Farm. Uh, if you have any questions for Jeffrey or a recommendation on an organization you would like to learn more about, feel free to reach out to me directly at uh, patrick at urbangreenlab.org. And before you go, don't forget to sign up for our newsletter. Uh, so you can stay up to date on the latest with UGL news. Um, you should be able to sign up for it. If you just go to our Facebook and just look under, it'll have a little quick portal. Um, but that is all I have for y'all today. Um, until the next time, remember to live sustainably.